Thank you so much for joining me on that video premiere of the Mommy Makeover days 6 through 14, or essentially my second week. And um, today is actually day 35 post. As you can imagine, producing videos and actual live day interactions do vary. I know it gets confusing for some people, um, but I'm just not that capable of filming and making a video all in the same day, unless it's super short. And also this was a time range, so I wanted to show that with you. But anyways, welcome. And we are gonna go over how I look, what the incisions look like, and some of my thoughts on the scar gels and tapes that I've been using, just to give you more insight. We're all different, we all heal differently, so I just wanna always like impart that to you because I just, I've healed really fast and my I think my incisions look really good and I just don't want anybody feeling negative if your journey of recovery from a surgery like this is slower because you know we're just different and I've always healed fast so that's just in my nature and my mom heals really fast so again um, I think I have like a genetic makeup maybe to heal fast and we're gonna try to hold on to that as long as we can. Okay, I hope everything is sounding and looking good. Hi Jane. How are you guys? Um, okay, Linda's here, Sonia's here, Melissa's here, Rita, Dottie, Andrea. It's so good to see you guys all. All right, so I did actually get a couple things from Anthropology last week, so we might try those on too, just to like have some more engagement. Hey, Jill, Shannon, Jill and Shannon. I mean, not Jill Shannon, but that would be a beautiful name too. Um, okay, let's see. I just have to hide the chat, otherwise I cannot um, tell. Maybe it'll go away. All right, so I put on the orange bathing suit again just because I think it's good to keep sometimes the same suit for before and afters, of course. I know some people are like, they will get freaked out if the lighting or the room changes, but the truth is, is that's really, really hard for me to control a lot of times. Um, so sorry if you feel like things are always different. Uh, okay, so obviously I'm not in my private app, so I can't show you as much of the scar as I would, but just to recap, on February 14th, 2023, 35 days ago, I had a full mommy makeover. My mommy makeover included a full tummy tuck, which is side hip to side hip. I did uh, a breast lift with a implant of 100cc silicone. I didn't think initially I was gonna need an implant because I just wanted them small and raised and tight, but due to asymmetry, I he said he needed some type of implant, so that's the reason I ended up with 100cc. I said, like, Jason really loved this. We went in for like the second meeting with him and I was like, how small can we go? And Jason's like looking at me and him like, hello. But in the end, I think it was the perfect size because they look proportionate for my frame and my body. They don't look overdone. They don't look huge. They're kind of perfect. So obviously they're not natural, <laughs> but that's okay too. <laughs> um, but I've never had like that arc before. So super happy about that. I'll show you what the underneath kind of incisions are looking like. Also on day 35 and probably for the last week, they're not as hard. So I feel like I can like massage them now, whereas before they were just like rocks. And now like you see like they're, yeah, you can press on them and I hope that's not too uh, much information. Okay, so underneath, because of the breast lift, and if you don't understand what a breast lift or what that surgery is like, I have videos here of the prep video explaining the surgeries and how they take place. I also have my actual surgery video here, like me on the table, Dr. Green talking about what he's doing and why he's doing it, which is fabulous. So if you want to understand that and you have a strong stomach, then, you know, that would be interesting for you. Okay, so you can see that the underneath line is pretty red. I would say that of my scars, these underneath ones are maybe the thickest and the most irritated. And I don't know if that's because you get a lot of rubbing there and you get a lot of um, just irritation right there. Whereas the other ones are much nicer. Like the ones that come up vertically are 
nice and tight and not as red. And then around the areola, like you guys, I can't even see them anymore. Um, do they fall a bit more or stay that pretty? Oh, I don't know. I hope, I hope they stay this like perkiness. Like that would, that would be perfect, obviously. Like, you know, but I don't know. I'm really bad at wearing bras <laughs> and support. So, um, well now I'll need to, but prior I was like never good at it and never like did that. So probably that's the reason I became a National Geographic figure, um, with just like long hangy overdone breasts. But, um, now I'll, yeah, I'll probably invest and try harder in keeping them <laughs> up. Um, okay. So on day 35, if you watched my other videos, you know that this whole area was pretty swollen still. And now you can see just even more definition in my rib cage. And you guys, again, I have not been perfect on keto or anything like that. I mean, I haven't been eating a ton of carbs, but I did have some Girl Scout cookies because it's that time of the year. And I just feel like I don't want to miss that. And um, what else? I've, I've had a bunch, of, like today I'm even for lunch, I'm meeting a girlfriend for a sandwich. So I am having some bread there. Um, but then last night I just had steak for dinner. So I think what I'm trying to do is if I am gonna have carbs, I'm trying to load them earlier in the day because I think my body still needs some some extra like glucose just, just to kind of help just overall healing. Your body makes your own glucose from protein so you don't need to take in sugar, but I don't know. This whole thing is an emotional roller coaster and I just think that, you know, I'm emotionally driven towards sugar. So if I can have a little bit, sometimes it just makes me happier. Okay. Um, so what did you say? Oh, thank you guys. Oh, Bo Eckingster. Thank you so much. Um, yes, this is a live in case. Okay. So I showed you underneath. I can't show you the full thing because, you know, then I get kicked off of YouTube again. Um, okay. So then I'm going to show you the tummy tuck scar and I'm going to talk about the scar tapes because, um, well, and before we get there, this area is still hard. Like it's squishier, but it's like hard. Like it feels like I ate like a burrito and smashed it inside a little like pouch and it like can't like move. It's like the weirdest thing, but I don't think it's a sarcoma or anything. It's just, then that's where you get like fluid that's trapped and they actually surgically have to go remove it. So it's just still day 35. Tomorrow I actually go in for post-op. Usually you go in for post-op at, at week six, which would be the following week, but I'm gonna be in Bora Bora that week. So they moved it up to week uh, five. So tomorrow I go in so they'll check everything and I can talk to them about that, but I'm sure they're gonna feel it and they're gonna be like, that's totally normal. Um, okay, so, and then as far as sensation goes, um, I've shared this before, but it's basically like a triangle down to the line of cut that's horizontal across your body and then up to the new belly button, this whole area. I just don't have the same sensation there. Now, it, it, it does feel like it's starting to return, but definitely here feels different than when I'm here. It's just a phantom odd feeling. Okay, so this scar tape is different than the scar tape that I've been using, which are those embrace embrace scar patches. The reason I use the embrace scar patches is because they really help keep the scar tight because they go across and somehow secure the skin so there's not tension pulling the skin apart because that's what is going to make your scars bigger. With that said, I've been testing some new tapes because I'm going to be going to Bora Bora and I those those ones just aren't gonna work. Number one, they're not gonna work because they're so tall that they come up above every swimsuit and so I'm not gonna wear that. Um, number two, they're not SPF protected and you really have to protect your scars from the sun. Even in regular clothing, like not even talking about being at the beach, regular clothing, regular outside, you need to have SPF on your scars at least, but with Bora Bora Tahiti in a, like swimsuit, we're gonna make sure that we're taped up. So here are the silicone scar. This is what I'm using. This is what I have down here. And actually I cut them in half to make them thinner. 
I'm gonna order a bunch of these to take and I'm gonna actually probably slice them in half and just have them ready to go. But you can see that this is the thickness of it. These are UV protectant. So they um, are going to help reduce like whatever sun like exposure I would get. So I cut it in half, but I will take it off so that I can show you guys what the incision is looking like today. And I'm gonna drop the tri tripod a little bit. I think that might be better. Okay, that might be better. See, like I'm always so short and I'm always like trying to figure out how to make this all work. Okay, um, also if we wanna like look at my legs, cause you guys know I did the leg lipo, which I'm so happy about. I always had like just like chunky knees and not that they're like amazing now, but I mean a world better. I, I actually think they're amazing for me because I have never had like a cut knee. And lipo, especially in the legs, can go really, really bad. So I think it turned out really good. In case you're wondering where the incisions for leg lipo are, you get one in your knee and you can actually see that that one is still kind of healing, whereas the other side is pretty much gone. Um, then you also get one right here at the bottom. And I think they like, they run it up, you know? And then, Obviously, the placement of these incisions is based on your body. If you don't have a fat knee and you just want your like inner and outer thighs done, well, then they're probably not going to go to your knee, right? But if you're like me and I'm like, I want my knees taken care of, <laughs> then um, then they're going to go down there. Okay. Then on the back side, let's see, you get one and it's actually healing up really good. It was kind of oozing so much longer than the other side. And then I like ripped on it. And anyways, so this one is healing up good. And then you do get one in the middle of your thigh right here. So you get one, two. Oh, you also get the inside one right here. Three, four, five. So there's five. And they're just like little dots and they heal up. Also, if you were in my app yesterday and um, you're with me when I did my lips, I, um, I did, you know, I had that kind of big bruise there. But I did some um, color corrector and hit it and... You guys, they're just still a little bit swollen, but I'm so happy with how they turned out. And then I also did give myself a little bruise here, but, and then a couple bruises here, but I did like chew those up. So just like fixing them up a little bit so they don't look too crazy. Okay, let's look. Um, yes, I, Brooklyn, I can't really talk about it here. Otherwise I will lose another YouTube channel. And in case you guys don't know, I used to have a very, very large, successful YouTube channel. I was plaqued and then um, YouTube just terminated me. And so I can't, and once you're terminated, you're not allowed to, I don't know. It's, anyways, go to, uh, I don't know, go to Spa and Tell's Instagram, message, message me there, DM me, and I can, um, and I can help you out there. Okay. All right, here we go. So we're going to take off this tape. It comes off really nice, actually. And I have to say that this tape is like not itchy and it's not irritating the way that unfortunately the Embrace one is. I don't know if that's because the Embrace is so fat that it creates just like so much irritation across all the rest of your skin. But um, yeah that it's been kind of, I want to love those embrace patches and they were quite an investment. So I want to utilize them, but I am kind of irritated that they are so frustrating. Okay. So here it is day 35. It's starting to fade down to like a purple color. So you can see that the redness is starting to go down. Um, I would say the thickest part of this the thickest part of my scar or like where I feel it like the chunkiest would be in this front area. But I've also been just like kind of massaging and pressing on it to just help with that scar tissue. Um, and then, yeah, so, um, and then here it is. So it's nice and tight. So happy how it's turned out. I still, you can see on the side, I still feel a little pulled over. So I can stand up, but it doesn't mean that 
I don't still feel some tension in the front, like wanting to bring me forward here. And I'll like, now I'll tilt the camera a little bit straighter so it doesn't seem so odd. Um, what else is there to say? Um, if anybody's on here right now that has a question about the mommy makeover or anything, post it now and I will watch and respond just in case you do. I think my belly button is looking great. Okay, so um, yeah, I think Dr. Green's belly buttons are really awesome. Maybe it's you mentally protecting your wounds. That's a great point, Candy, but there is like, honestly, there is a physical like tension because remember, it's not the skin. I mean, the skin had tension. It's your abs because when they pull you open, they suture all these abs inside, making them super tight, which is why you get this like internal corseting that brings you in so tight. And then they drape the skin, tack it down. And then all of a sudden you like have that tight midsection. Um, oh, thank you, Linda. That's so kind of you. So I think it's kind of, number one, I don't want to put any stress, of course, on that incision, but also I think it's an internal um, pull. And this feels like a, you know, pouch still. So I'm hoping that over the next month that kind of fades out too. Oh, Sunil, thank you. Do I have the mons pubis fat? Oh, um, yeah, well, that's part of that video when I'm on the table and he's talking about what he's doing. And I think he says um, he's lipoing down in the mons area to help with that step down, right? So, I mean, I always felt, I didn't even know that this area was called the mons. I <laughs> didn't know what it was called. I just figured pubic area. And I always felt like mine was like chubby. I mean, I don't look at other girls' undercarriages, so I'm not that familiar with like how I compare or what, but I just remember f always thinking like, oh, it's like, it's got a lot of padding there. And so when he was like doing the lipo section, he talked about how, and I guess this is a normal thing because maybe lots of people carry weight there, but if he was going to tie this in right there and then this area was like bigger, right? Then you would have like a pooch, which would be really, really ugly because it would just make it stand out so much more. So he liposuctions down into the mons area so that when he pulls the stomach down, you get a flat seam and everything goes together well. So, um, yeah, Linda, it is literally an internal corset. Yes. So super happy, super happy with like everything. I'm, I was scared that we had planned this amazing trip to Bora Bora and I was not going to be ready. And I was just telling Jason, like, I'm sad. Like, I think it's going to be just such a waste. And he was even saying like, well, do you want to postpone? We can go at a different time. And I was like, no, because this fits in perfectly to our schedules, except for me being whatever. And so um, I just, it's such a blessing to have recovered so fast and feel so good. Okay, so I have these other things over here really quick that I wanted to go over. Let's see, some of my scar gels. I'm just gonna take a drink really quick. I'm gonna drop, I don't understand. I always think that I make it low, but it's not low enough, right? Okay. Is that better? I always, it's like always got, it's like my, um, okay, that's better. Um, worked out so perfect. Yeah, it is working out perfectly. And then my admin team from the app comes in May and we're going to do a whole Napa experience. It's just going to be great. Okay. So these are two new scar gels that I got at Dr. Rice's office when he, um, well, he did my Sculptra, you know, on Friday and I shared that. And then he also hit the scar that he removed, the lump he removed from the side of my face in December. He hit it with a uh, CO2 laser. So then he recommended, he had some different scar gels. So I was looking at these. The first one he recommended, and especially after he did this, he's like, we've got to throw this tri-hex skin nectar on it. And I was like, okay, what is that? So, and I looked it up on my laptop because I wasn't like exactly sure either. But this stuff 
is super nice. And I will grab my laptop to like explain what it is. Now, for those of us in the know, in our app, um, this might not seem all that new to you guys, but I'm, I'm on their website right now. So it says the Trihex technology works with the skin to help clear out damaged elastin and collagen. So when you have trauma to the skin, like, like a cut or a wound, your body will build up scar tissue. It'll build up that elastin and that collagen. And apparently this Trihex technology that they have helps to break down those older forms of elastin and collagen while supporting the skin's natural ability to produce new healthy elastin and collagen. Because if you've ever watched like demonstrations or like uh, video diagrams of elastin, you have these fibers that are supposed to run vertically in the skin. But what ends up happening as we age is they kind of like shrink down and get like shriveled, which is also why we get more wrinkles and a loss of volume and collagen. But then they also can get just like weird and tight. So like you'll have areas that get tighter rather than just staying the same length. So if you can break out those old uh, ones that aren't consistent, you'll have better looking skin. So that's one of the things that it apparently has. And then it has an Arnica Montana, which will help to help your skin recover from bruising. Um, and then it's got this phytotene and phytofluin. So it's a potent antioxidant extract from saltwater microalgae that addresses the appearance of pigmentary concerns and protects the skin from further damage. So when I was looking at this site for this product that I got from him, they, I think the reason plastic surgeons are selling it is because it's really great apparently for after CO2 laser and probably for after like a TCA peel because you can see how her skin is recovering um, with it. And they have like a bunch of different products of brighteners and stuff. But anyways, uh, he recommended that I put that on, on my scars, like this one, and then even on my body scars and then tape them. And so we were talking about it because I was like, well, the tape won't stick if like it's got stuff because you have to alcohol. And he's like, I think what you do is you take like a little like brush and he's like, I think you get it right in the um, in the incision. Okay, Elena, I want to answer your question. So one second, get it right in the incision. And then he's like, and then, you know, make sure the outside of the incision is alcoholed. And he's like, I think the tape should stick on it. He also reconfirmed for me that this needs to be protected from the sun with a physical barrier like, like this. So this is actually that tape too. And um, so again, I cut it down and that's what's on the side of my face. So I don't know. I'll probably wear this like this during the days and maybe at night when we go to dinner, I'll take it off and just do my makeup or something. But in the end, like it's right back here. When I take pictures and stuff, we'll just take them from the side. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, in the end, I care more about it healing well than, um, than people like wondering why I have tape on my face. And, you know, people will wonder a million things about me anyway, so I don't even care. Okay. So then this is the other one I got from him. It's Skin Nuva. And actually this one is sold on Amazon. I don't know. I don't know if the Elastine company is sold on Amazon, but this one is. And I think we added it to the surgery recovery, um, mommy makeover surgery list on my Amazon shop. So then he said to put this on top of it. So this is um this has growth factors in it so you do the trifecta peptide it's essentially peptides that's what is going to remodel the elastin and then you throw in these growth factors and this is also silicone based and he said that with this one they actually did a great study where they chopped the scar in half and they did one side with this and one side didn't or maybe they did like regular tape or I, I can't remember exactly what the whole method of uh, comparison was, but he said that this one definitely helped. And that's the reason he decided to carry this one because he's a facial plastic surgeon. And so for him, scars and eliminating scars are the number one concern, right? Like we even talk about things like he even said to me when he was going to take this lump out, he's like, well, 
how much does that lump bother you? Because you're probably gonna end up with a three millimeter scar right there. And I was like, well, if we don't take it out, I'm probably gonna end up with like a wound because this lump I keep scratching at and it's annoying. And he's like, okay, yeah, let's remove it. So anyways, that is that. The other one that I do have is this biocorneum. And this is the one that my plastic surgeon who did my body cells, this one has, it's, it's called biocorneum. You can also find this on Amazon. It has SPF in it and it's good, except that, you know, it's got the silicone in it. It's great for scar healing. So if you didn't want to tape for some reason, or let's say, let's say I'm a year out and I don't want to tape, but I want to just make sure that everything is protected well. This is a great one to use underneath my clothes because this has the SPF in it and the silicone for hydrating and keeping the skin healthy. Okay, I saw Elena's question. She asked, did the liposuction in your legs hurt? So to begin with, of the three, the tummy tuck is such a B that it's the only thing you focus on. It's the only thing you can even wrap your mind around. It is so horrible. <laughs> like the pain of the tummy tuck and it's not the incision it's this it's the internal suturing and you see I still have this kind of like area up here that hopefully will settle down but it's it's this so it outweighs the breast lift it outweighs the liposuction in the legs however I will say liposuction is number two of the pain at least for me so it was tummy tuck excruciating then all of a sudden I started to notice the liposuction in my legs. The liposuction in your legs feels kind of like, how can I explain this? It, it You just feel like you did a lot of squats. You're super sore. The skin even hurts to touch. But then you also, because of the femoral nerve that runs down your legs, now you usually only get pain from one. This side was hurting. It's still like, there's like a numbness or like a a sensitivity even when I run my fingers up the inside so but like again like I I can push on them I mean they still feel sensitive but it's not it's not the pain that it was before and it wasn't like a aching pain it was just like if I moved my leg like a weird way or something like it would just like be like oh that's kind of like sore or sometimes there would be a random ache I will say that now that the tummy tuck doesn't hurt as much, it doesn't hurt, it's just an awkward feeling. And now that my legs don't hurt as much, I would like to get Sculptra, can you tell us what the cost was per syringe and how many syringes you had all together? Yes, Anne, hold on, I will I will answer that. Um, if I don't for some reason, some, someone remember, remind me, but I will. Um, okay, so now it's the, it's the breast lift that I notice. And it's not that they're aching, it's that, or it's not that the incisions are painful because honestly, the incisions haven't been that painful. Sometimes the underneath one would get irritating. And definitely when I had that thick tape on, I couldn't handle that, so I had to take it off. Um, but, but now, especially on this side, and this was my smaller breast, which is why I think this one had to be such a big incision because this one actually isn't bad, but this was my smaller one. So maybe he had to do more work with the bigger one to get it to like come up and be in proportion to the other one. This one, it just seems like I'll get these weird aches sometimes in it. Like I'll be like, oh, I think maybe that's just nerve endings coming back together. I don't really know what to make of it. It's probably totally normal. Sometimes I feel like I have them too compressed in some of the um, compression garments. So then like sometimes I won't even, I'll do my compression suit, but I won't sleep with the compression bra on at night anymore. They're just loose out. Sometimes I put on like a sweatshirt over it, um, but I definitely do still sleep in the compression suit. And the reason is, is because specifically after you have liposuction, you have all of these channels in your legs where they pulled fat out of, right? It's not like a nice, thin, consistent mat where they pull fat. No, it's like pluck, 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 pluck. So because of that, you want it being as compressed as possible because you don't want those pockets filling up 
with liquid. And that's what's going to help. That's what's, if you do not do compression, that will keep you swollen longer. You need to be in compression. Plus, you do liposuction, you're losing volume, you have this skin, you don't want to do liposuction and then just have loose skin. Loose skin or fat, it's the same, like they're not desirable. Sometimes I think loose skin is probably even worse. So you have to like compress, compress, compress to try to get that skin and that fascia to reattach so that you do not end up with loose skin. And the longer you let your skin not attach to the fascia, it's going to be harder and it probably won't, okay? So the most, the best benefit you can do for yourself is compression, 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 as long as you can take it. I know ladies who are in compression for over a year. So get your mind around that, okay? Like you might do compression for a year, but I know for myself, I've also grown into loving my compression. Like I hate that I'm not in it right now. Okay, the other thing that I was going to share with you is that, oh, the question on Sculptra. Okay, so I got Sculptra on Friday. It was my first Sculptra experience. And um, I definitely wanted somebody who's super duper good at like a facial plastic surgeon. Sculptra can go really bad, you guys. These are biostimulators, but it is a suspended particle. So you have to make sure that you're going to someone who really understands aesthetics, understands placement, and can do a really nice job. I thought Dr. Rice did a fabulous job and I filmed it all. So I'll be releasing that video maybe next week or something. He did a fabulous job. I mean, I walked out of there and getting Sculptra is like getting liposuction because it's a cannula that they're plunging up and down in your face as they backfill and release the, the particles. And because Sculptra is not a um, homogeneous solution, you have suspended particles those particles can create nodules. So you have to be massaging your face for five days, five times a day. And um, it's super important to make sure that all of those particles get dispersed evenly in that area that it was placed. And I'm super excited about it. People are on the fence with Sculptra. Some people have had fantastic growth factors from it and produced their own collagen. Other people feel like it was a huge waste of money. It's expensive. So I think the range in the United States is $700 to $1,200 a vial per, for Sculptra. I had two vials done for my face and it was $2,000. So I'm paying about $1,000 um, a vial, but I'm also having a like really high-end fa facial plastic surgeon do it. Typically he doesn't do it. Um, he did it for me because we're friends and he was filming and he's super gracious that way. But normally it's his his and, and look injectable nurses they're awesome you guys it's all they do so they're really good too so i'm not trying to be negative towards injectable nurses injectable nurses a lot of times are superior to the plastic surgeon that they're operating under because that's all they do that is their wheelhouse they're in there all day long only doing injectables so there's nothing wrong with going to a fantastic injectable rn just make sure that you go to a very reputable place do not I think, okay, I think of all things, if you were gonna try to get a deal on it, Sculptra is not the thing to get a deal on. If you see some kind of group on, I don't know. I mean, I love a deal, but you have to feel really, really secure with where you're going and look at their before and afters. And I think you just have to go to a super reputable place because the last thing you want is Sculptra being misplaced. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question about the Sculptra. Um, I think I saw another question Let's see. Um, okay, wait. Aaron says, I wish I would have known about these years ago. I had a horrible hysterectomy that left me with a huge wide scar down the middle underneath the thumb. Once I'm done losing weight, I'll get it fixed. Yes. And I'm so glad you bring that up. Go into your surgeries at your best shape, weight, health possible. Surgery can only do so much. Your surgeon, you want to give them the best the best material to work with. That means your skin is in good condition. That means you are super healthy. That means you're not bleeding out on the table and they're trying to spend their whole time during surgery sopping it up. I know that if any of you are medical people on here, you know that you probably spend way too much time trying to stop people from bleeding on the surgery table. When you go in super healthy and they can just like suture easily and there's not a lot of blood and they're not worried about damming it all up and trying to see and sucking it up, like it makes everything that much better. Plus your recovery is that much better because you're not leaking out everywhere and just filling with fluid. Okay, I think what we should do, 
is I have these things that I just got from Anthro. So these are like in, in there right now. Like, like I know a lot of times I buy like sales and deals and I'm always like, oh, I think there's only like, I don't know. I found it on the sales rack. No, these were like full price items. So they will be available. Okay. So the first thing I got was this hat because I just thought it's like the perfect Bora Bora hat. Um, and so I'm going to be wearing this there. I think it's super cute. And it's like this great, like, you can see the texture on it, right? So beautiful. So I'm really excited about that one. And then I also wanted like, just like an easy slinky dress. So these are just like cotton dresses. They have them in different colors. My, my packing scheme, because I like to try to make my packing like color cohesive so that everything works together. Oh, thanks, Melissa. And if you guys have more questions on these topics, let me know. I'll, I'll watch the chat as I'm, um, and if you asked one and I didn't answer it, just go ahead and re-ask it because as I'm talking and doing things, I, I can't catch everything. So this is like a great dress for just like going down to the beach or like going across. So Bora Bora, like with the Four Seasons and the St. Regis, they're out on, they're like across from the middle island out on like the atoll. So you take a boat back and forth. Um, oh, you're linking everything right now. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, so this one is just a slinky dress. Now I do have this in an extra small just to give you perspective on size. Um, I could have done a small, honestly, but <laughs> Ross, who I love at my anthropology, she's always like, no, 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 you're, you're smaller than that. I'm like, I don't know. Um, but anyways, so this is great. And you can like tie it up and cinch it up however you want on the side. If you want it like shorter or longer, I think, I think, oh yeah, it, it'll move. Um, so this is great for us shorties because we don't have to get it hemmed. We can just modify it. So that's a fun one. And then this top is super cute. Actually, let me put it on with a pair of shorts that we tried on last week because I really love this top and I think it's great. So one second, I'm gonna take my swimsuit off and put on the shorts. Yeah, let's do the black shorts. I think that'll be good. Oh, I actually have a little thing to show you too. It was my first Hermes purchase. It, it's like one of the probably least expensive things you can buy there. But I think it will be super cool to like wear there. And um, I need to figure out how to tie it and all that kind of good stuff. But I'm excited to try. Okay, I also have this bralette. So I'll try it on underneath this so that you can see both. But honestly, you guys, this trip, and I'm sure lots of people like dream of going there, but it has definitely been like a lifelong dream to go there. When I went to, I went to BYU Hawaii at, for college and my first roommate was from Bora Bora and she danced at the Polynesian Cultural Center. So like, she was like, yeah, you have to go. And um, <laughs> ever since then, I've just been like, oh my gosh, I have to get to her beautiful island. Sad thing is, is now, because it's been 20 plus years, I uh, feel like I, I don't even know how to look her up. So that's kind of sad, but maybe, maybe it'll all work out and somehow I'll find her there. Or maybe she doesn't even live there anymore. Okay, so I know I, I haven't done a good job yet, but this is, and th probably these shorts aren't the right shorts for it. But anyways, just forget that. But it's it um, zips on the side. So you get a pretty like nice fit on that. Yeah, I'm gonna need to find a different pair of like whatever I'm wearing with this, but I think that this top is super cute and I love how it like comes together in the front and I love how you can have like a nice like trim middle with it. And then this is 
the bralette. Let me make sure I'm in it. The bralette is super cute because it um, kind of goes in the center like a bow. And I'll, I'll show you once I get this one done. I was in an actually a smaller size than this and I told Ross, I'm like, I need a bigger size. I'm afraid I'm gonna put too much tension on this side. Okay, so this is the bralette. Oh, there we go. And it's it's like a, a bow in the center. And I think that's like super cute. And apparently, as I'm told by the stylist at Anthro right now, that all the cool girls, <laughs> the style is that everyone's wearing bralettes as tops. And uh, I just don't know if I'm that cool, but we'll see. Um, Okay, so Kimberly Kelly says, carnivore pro tip, if you get good quality leaf lard, you can put it on the scar, even your hair to make it thick. You can cook with it as well. It's the best rendered lard you can have. Oh, really? Leaf lard. Okay, that's amazing. Thank you so much for telling me. Um, three quarter time says, I'm still amazed at how fast you bounce back. I know you were excited for you. Yes, I am so excited. Yes, I'm 5'2", and I weigh like, 118, 19 pounds, somewhere in there, I think. I kind of don't want to get on the scale right now because I don't want to know um, if it's gone up. <laughs> um, so anyways, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that I gave you some insight on how it's healing. I hope I gave you some insight on scar gels. Oh, there's this other one that I was using too, or I tried out, but... I like, I think I like this other one better. This one's not bad. And it's actually kind of cool because it does, it's perforated, so it tears. And you could cut it in half, but it's it's see-through. So I like this one better, which is by this brand, the Edusine, because it's going to block the sun. So that's the reason I prefer that one. This one's not bad, but it's also see-through and it's not really going to solve the issue that I want it to do. All right, you guys, I'll see you next time. I will be live on Amazon on Thursday morning and I'll see you guys there if you're able to come. Bye.